about the life, love, and pop pop culture. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm Emerus Cooper, and welcome to my humble abode. This is Cribs, and I'm cleaning the pool as something rather nasty might have happened in it last night. In fact, would you would you mind getting your assistant to clean it? I don't normally clean. I'm a trophy boy. All right, let's do the interview. Hi guys, I'm Danielle Delgado. <laughs> hey, I'm Emrys Cooper, and you're watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. So your film, Trophy Boy, premiered at Cannes, and it's going to be at the Dances with Films Festival next week. So how excited are you to finally like show this project? Well, I'm glad you've done the research. <laughs> Very happy to hear that. It's always been nice to remember that we were at Cannes. Yeah, it's um, it's really exciting because I made this and I never had any expectations or assumptions really to do anything. I um, do remember that two years later I've been an actor for 15 years, but I've always wanted to work and direct. And it all kind of came about very organically. I was just very um, kind of upset with the, the way social media was affecting some of my friends' lives, how much it had taken over and how it stopped people from learning, how it stopped people being self-aware. You know, I think you can curate the social media so much that you start to believe it. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I kind of was inspired to make it as an eye-opener for people. Um, and it also helped me. Me because I've also been guilty of partaking on social media for some sense of you know, validation or whatever. Mm. So um, I'm delighted that Trophy Boy is now like starting to get an audience. And, um, I truly believe it's an introduction to a bigger world that I've, I've now actually put in the pilot mm. and shot in the show. And I just wanted to make something that could be really honest and about our this generation and hopefully make people look at their own lives, you know. Well, it's so funny that you bring that point up because I was actually going to bring that up. In the beginning of the film, you portray this perfect life. Yeah. And throughout the film, you see that this life isn't as perfect as it seems. And that's definitely what's going on with, you know, what's going on in the world today. Yeah. Right? We perceive this perception that's, that looks perfect, but it's not always perfect yeah. behind the scenes. And what's sad is you have a lot of people that don't necessarily have an exciting life and they're watching these people with amazing lives. And it kind of magnifies what they don't have. And I, in fact, have friends of mine who don't want to put anything out with me and my friends because they just don't feel they're up to it. And I'm like, you know, you can to see a, a 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's kind of sad when people uh, feel bad about themselves because you know, they don't feel they've got enough going on. And in reality, uh, you know, even if you've got 100 million followers and a lot of money, you've still got. Just your shit still sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? Yeah. Sorry. You can say whatever you want. Yeah, so no, no. you starred, you directed, and you produced this film. Yeah, and I, I came up with a storyline um, loosely based on some things I'd seen or been through, and Anthony also brought in, he's a writer, um, and I watched the movie, and I, 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 I've never written a script, so I kind of had this idea and we molded it together, and now a lot of it is kind of a, a mixture of his story and stories that I, I want to tell. Um, and uh, then I produced it, and I, I'm, I'm given a month. We were filming it in February, and I, I had a very strict deadline for Cannes. So we would work our asses off, mm -hmm. just submit it to Cannes, and luckily we got in. And um, now we're just going to do like a six month film festival run, and, and in the meantime, we're also going to be shopping it as a television series or a potential feature. We're not quite sure exactly mm -hmm. the path, but I believe it. it's a story that has further to go. Yeah. I think, I think so too. I mean, like I said, it's so relevant to what's going on today. Well, aside from this film, what else do you have coming up? Um, well, thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I just had a film that kept, got released in theaters called Alter Perception, which is a very interesting film. This is about this new um, designer drug that can basically stop you having um, basically perception of you're doing wrong, but it actually the whole film goes wrong. But what <laughs> I think is very integral to the experiment, <laughs> I have a, a horrible ending. But what I think is really interesting about the film is I think prescription drugs and you know pharmaceutical companies are doing all these things to make money and the testing is really, you know, the way they're testing these drugs is just so unprofessional. Um, so I think the film is quite, it's quite, got a current issue, you know, with a problem with um, prescription meds. And I, I do think it's uh, an important thing because I think both Americans have become so over-prescribed, you know, that no one wants to deal with that problem. You graduated so, like, young, you must have known, like, right away that you wanted to be in this industry. Yeah, I basically popped out the womb and was writing, like, my, 
My parents got me on stage from such a young age because both of them were involved with amateur dramatics and I got on stage as a young four or five year old and I didn't know about fame and money. I, I definitely think I got into the industry before I knew about any of the toxic side of it. I got into the general love of storytelling and entertaining people and making people smile. That's why I do this. Um, obviously fame and money are great but they're fulfilling. They don't, they don't necessarily feed me but what feeds me is telling stories that I know make an impact whether it's making you laugh, making you think. Um, I hope my legacy is something of inspiration. Um, I look at myself, I've evolved, I'm not just an actor anymore, I'm, I would say I hate the word artist, I'm a filmmaker, you know, I like to make, oh my god, Mango, do you want to the interview? <laughs> Mango is this crazy cat. Yeah, no, I, so I think I've, you know, I started my career as a dancer and a singer and, um, you know, I was always told you can't be an actor because, you know, you go to drama school where I went before the performing arts school. So. I never listened to people saying no. I always just, I just figured out my own path. One of the best pieces of advice people have ever said is, "Don't pay your rent to anyone else. Just make it yours." You know, just you know, just stick to what you know. There's no formula for success. If there was, then you know, everyone would be doing it. But there exactly. is, it's about kind of navigating it and being really true to what your beliefs are. And is there a point in your career that stands out the most to you? Um, a defining moment in my career. I mean, there's been quite a few. I think when I first got my West End show, I was at the show we we were rock you. Uh, you know, I had to feed uh, six hundred people three days of audition. I remember when I landed that show. I, I do truly believe that my colleagues say you don't have to necessarily be the best in the room to think you're the best and stand out like you have that I have that confidence because people trust in me. And I mm-hmm. think that I I knew as soon as I got on that stage without being arrogant, I was going to get the job. And I just had that confidence in me, and it's been knocked out of me a little bit. Like I got to LA, and you know, there's a million people like you, but I had, I've always had this steely kind of um, grit, I guess. Um, that, so booking that show, being in the West End at 21, was pretty amazing because it was very hard to get there. Mm-hmm. I was the youngest person in the show, and then I think um, some other key moments. You know, I actually booked a role in Desperate Housewives, and. That was uh, funny because I made a vision board and I put Desperate Housewives on it when I was, yeah, and I put Desperate Housewives on because it was the hottest show at the time. Mm-hmm. And I made this vision board when I was still living in the UK. LA was just a dream. Mm-hmm. And I remember finding the vision board years later, and I thought that I'd been in Desperate Housewives and on the vision board was Sunset Strip, and I was in fact living on Sunset Strip. So there's been kind of like key moments where I, t- wow. I, I truly believe sometimes it's really important to kind of know where things you want and where you want to go. Mm-hmm. You know, you're telling the universe, I want this. If you're very vague about your dream, I sometimes think, you know. So now, um, I'd say I had a really good run of an act- as an actor. I've had some really fantastic roles, but whilst doing more acting roles, I've now set up a company called Emco Entertainment, and I'm hoping to do um, socially conscious stuff that's going to really kind of open people's eyes up. And the stories that I believe in, you know, yeah, they're going to be like the survival, but I also want to do stories that can help people. Director, producer, an actor. Yep. So, um, at the end of the day, what do you want people to remember you for the most? I mean, I think ultimately I want to be remembered as an actor because I think that um, that's the thing I'm you know, most passionate about. But I hope that um, I leave at least a couple of films to stand the best of time. Thank you so much for sharing with me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to tune in next time, guys, as we discuss more life, love, and pop culture. life love and pop pop culture if you enjoyed my interview subscribe to my youtube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos every wednesday